Stay tuned now for Westchester Eye on the Radio with Peter Moses, John Sharan, and our Dino Seward on 1460 WVOX. Welcome, everybody. Hello, Ardina, and our, our guest host today, Charles Stern, who we hope is going to be more than a guest host and is going to come and sit in that chair on a regular basis. How are you today? Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. And uh, What time did you wake up this uh, morning? <laughs> later than usual because it's actually it. it's a national holiday. So it is a national holiday. I, I took advantage of the extra couple hours. And people, and I don't, I don't people know have I... to listen to your show tonight. Red, exactly. Red Blue Talk Radio. 6 o'clock, 6 o'clock on Facebook Live, facebook.com slash Red Blue Talk. Okay. I don't know if you wish people a happy Martin Luther King Day or if you ask them, if you, if you say to people, hope you have a very reflective on the state of the country, Martin Luther yeah, King Yeah, I've Day. had the same question, Peter, and someone did say that to me on the phone earlier today, and yeah. I, I, it felt a little odd. I think the second thing you said is makes it, more sense to me. Ardina? I would just say shout out to MLK. <laughs> okay, Ardina, <laughs> on that note. Brief and to the point. On that note, we have a guest today uh, who's a state senator in northern Westchester named Pete Harkham. Pete and I have known each other for several years. How are you today? Oh, Great. Thanks so much for having me. You do remember me, right? I absolutely do. Okay, I want to make sure. Um, so you're in a you're in a um, an argument or part of an argument with the Connecticut governor over tolls. Why don't you talk about what the issue is and what you think the solution should be? Sure. The issue is uh, the governor of Connecticut, in his quest for uh, revenue to make some capital improvements to the Connecticut transportation system, has decided to place a toll on Route 684. There's about a one-mile sliver of the road that goes through Connecticut. There's not an entrance from Connecticut. There's not an exit uh, to Connecticut. Um, it really is just by by fluke of geography that it cuts through Connecticut. Uh, so it's essentially uh, New York drivers, and he wants to put a toll there. And I find that outrageous. My constituents find it outrageous. Uh, and what we need to do is have a discussion with our colleagues in Connecticut about regional transportation needs uh, and, and how we can both jointly as neighbors uh, reach those objectives. It sounds pretty pathetic to me that they have a, a, a little sliver. And I, I, I don't remember which exit. Is it by exit 5 or I think exit it's between 2 no, and 3? It's, it's, it's south, oh, 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 it's, south by, it's by of the, the airport. Armonk exit. Okay, so it's, it's, it's by, okay, it's by the Westchester County Airport. Exactly. Um, all right. Exactly. All right. So that's, yeah, that, that, there is that little sliver over there yeah. where 120 is. You it's know, a, where, where King mile, Street it's, is. It's, it's, it's 1.4 like, miles. Yeah. It's a very short. On, on the east side of King Street, when you're going towards uh, the airport and, and you're, you're heading, I guess, west, on the north, on the, you know, heading north on the south side of the street is Connecticut, and on the uh, left, left where the airport is, it's, it's, uh, it's New York. And, and the airport sits in both in a very, very quirky way. I think New King Street... If I, am I wrong, Pete, or is New no, King you're, Street? You're ab ab absolutely correct. Yeah, New King Street um, is in Connecticut. So it's you know it's it's nothing more uh, than a money grab. And and when you talk about that little stretch, uh, New York for the past fifty years has maintained it, has policed it, and when there are emergencies, it's it's EMS uh, and fire departments from New York who respond to the scene. So there there's nothing Connecticut about it. Uh, and, and if they feel that they need to do repairs on their infrastructure, that's fine. So do we. Let's have a regional discussion. One of the reasons why my constituents are so angry is that every morning thousands, literally thousands of Connecticut cars pour through Bedford, Pound Ridge, Lewisboro, and North Salem uh, because the state roads are backed up and Route 84 is backed up coming into 684, and they're trying to avoid all that. So theoretically, you know, 
we we have we have infrastructure needs as well. Why not put tolls up on the Connecticut border uh, to fix New York infrastructure? And and we've threatened to do that. We don't want to do that. Um, nobody wants to get into a toll war. But the whole point is to foster a regional discussion. But the governor is so arrogant he wouldn't even respond to our correspondence uh, from Shelley Mayer, myself, David Buckwald, and others. Um, so it's 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 a hair hair brain scheme. So you're, you're uh, talking and, about the and governor it's of New York. By arrogance. Governor of Connecticut. Oh, okay. You're talking about the governor of Connecticut there. So may yeah. I ask you a question? So <clears throat> Interstate 84 implies that the Federal Department of Transportation would have some say. What do they say? Well, I have not heard from, from them yet, but you are absolutely correct in that it's it's interstate commerce and, and our constitution protects interstate commerce so that one state can't unfairly inhibit commerce in another state. And so what he wants to do with this plan is there was so much backlash when he wanted to put the toll there, he now says it will only be for trucks. And that's that's a kind of a, an arbitrary and capricious punishment of New York truckers and New York commerce. I got one more for you. I don't believe him, because once that toll thing goes up, eventually... It's going to be for cars, and that's why oh, I would object to it. Absolutely. All you have to do is change the computer program. And how would this impact the, the, the traffic flow? Well, I think I think it will um, severely impact the local streets because you're now going to have trucks uh, going from White Plains up Route 22 through Armonk and into Bedford uh, and getting back on 684 f- further north. Sounds so, like a mess. So the trucks are smart. They're they're not going to want to pay this toll. No. Uh, so the trucks are going to be flooding the local streets. And and we're, and we're going to have to and and, and and the and the King Street overpass because some peop, some truckers will want to go on the Merritt uh, on the Hutch Merritt uh, are going to have the tops of their trucks sheared off. Anyway, we're going to be back after a Fox News and Fox Business News break with Pete Harkham. Uh, to discuss this further and maybe a couple of other issues that might be of interest to the state senator. This is Westchester Eye on the Radio on WVOX and WVOX.com. Please stay tuned. Let's return now to Westchester Eye on the Radio with Peter Moses and and Ardina Seward on 1460 WVOX. And welcome back, everybody. Thanks for sticking with us. We have an exciting hour. We are talking to Pete, Senate, State Senator Pete, Pete Harkham, who is repping the 40th District in upstate New York. And we are talking about a lot of things. One of them are tolls. And I think you also want to discuss the recent vandalism in the houses of worship in your district. Yeah, it's it's really a disturbing trend. Um, recently, uh, in in Pleasantville, uh, a house of worship sign with a rainbow rainbow flag were vandalized. Um, there were uh, acts of, of vandalism in Yorktown. We've had it in Sleepy Hollow, um, over in Cortland and Peekskill. Uh, so we we need to send a strong message. Uh, that that hate and hate speech are not tolerated. Um, this is not a prank. This is not something that's funny. Uh, in in the wake of what's happened over in Muncie, um, you know, it's really disturbing. And and we've had a series of of public forums uh, that that we're calling "Hate in the Era of Multiculturalism." We had one in Pleasantville, one in Mayapack. We've got one coming up in Yorktown that that we're going to use high school students uh, and hear what they have to say. But we really need to have a vigorous uh, public dialogue uh, across all sectors in the schools, public officials, uh, the clergy, um, because we've got to, we've got to stamp this out in the bud. We can't let this uh, fester uh, and have fertile ground uh, in the Hudson Valley. But I got to be honest with you, with you, Senator. Uh, you know, there's a group called EV Europa that's been active in Westchester and, uh, and in Rockland County for mm-hmm. a good two years. They've been putting stickers up all over the place. And You're so right. far, nobody's been able to ferret them out. So what's, what's up with the police? I mean, why isn't there, is there a vigorous investigation that we're not aware of? Or why are they allowed to continue their campaign of just blistering the community with these nasty signs? Yeah, they're, they're, they're offensive. Um, 
for instance, DOT uh, tries as rapidly as they can to pull them down as soon as they hear about them. Uh, our office has reported them. They've, they've been very proactive. Uh, the police are investigating. You know, the problem is uh, these, are, these are often um, done in the dead of the night um, in areas without uh, surveillance cameras. Um, but the state police can get involved if, if the issue is serious enough. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why we, we need to speak out. You know, people may say, oh, it's just a, a sticker, but it's, it's a very offensive sticker. You know, and we don't, we don't yell fire in a crowded movie place. Um, so, so that's why we need to speak up loudly. Uh, I, I appreciate you bringing up the subject because, uh, it's, it's, it's offensive, it's threatening, and, and there's really no place for it in a civil society. Well, it's not, it's, it really, I mean, this is something the Jewish community has faced for hundreds of years, uh, having our houses of worship vandalized. And I'm sorry it spread to churches as well. Um, but police agencies uh, aside, uh, I, I think this is going to come down to neighbors. I think people who exactly. are out in the street, uh, you know, in their cars, and see people doing something need to call the police immediately. Uh, need to write down license plates if these people are coming in by vehicle, and I, I don't think this is homegrown. This is not a Westchester problem. This is a problem that's taking place in Westchester, but this is this goes far beyond the Westchester borders, as you know, um, Pete, because you know you're yeah. well aware of this issue. And um, when they when people put up stickers, that's a terrible thing. When they vandalize houses houses of worship. That's an equally or even worse terrible thing. When they go into those houses of worship and start destroying things, that's the next level. And that so far has happened in some churches as well, but it's a widespread problem in the Jewish community all around the world. You're, you're absolutely right, Peter. Um, and and that's why we can't let it escalate. And And you're absolutely right. People need to be the eyes and ears. Uh, of the police and law enforcement and report these things as soon as they see them because if they fester they escalate as as you you so aptly alluded to in your comments it's it's a very upsetting it's, they destroyed the sign on uh the St. John's Church Episcopal Church um it, it it's like picture a, a simple road sign in front of a church like you'd see with you know two poles and a sign between the poles uh pride flag on one of the poles they destroyed the sign. And here's the thing. The stickers... way, we don't know who they are at that point. I mean, this could be high school kids joyriding, and then people make assumptions that it's this group. I mean, you, you really don't know. There's, there's a lot of immature hatred yep. going on out there. Uninformed, immature Hazing it could be. and racism. It could be, but, but, it's, but you it's know, still there, there's a there's a difference between uh, the kind of malarkey of you know throwing toilet paper in trees and egging windows, um, you know that 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 kids do from vandalizing a house of worship, a synagogue, a mosque, a temple. Um, you know that that crosses a line, uh, and and even if they're young people, they they need to know that there are consequences for that sort of offensive behavior. Yeah, exactly. I mean, here's, yes. here's the thing: exactly. if, you, if you dent a stop sign, uh, that's vandalism. But if you destroy a sign and there's a cross on one side and a pride flag on the other, that is a, it's a hate crime. That looks like a hate crime to me. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I mean, putting up a sticker someplace with something offensive, that, that could be protected by the First Amendment, potentially, uh, free speech. Uh, but uh, destroying the sign in front of a church is most definitely vandalism, and uh, it, it sure looks like a form of hate speech to me. And I just, I just want, want, want to remind the audience that you, you, you spoke about free speech. In our next segment, we are going to have an attorney, the attorney for a WPIX cameraman, who has been terminated for alleged racist remarks and a meme that was put on Facebook. So uh, we'll keep Pete on for the next couple of seconds, and then we're going to go to a break, and after that, we're going to open our final half-hour segment with a discussion about the firing, the termination of this WPIX camera. So Pete, the music is playing, and thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming on thank the you. air. 
Thanks for having me back. I wish I was in the studio in person. Next well, maybe time. next time you can do that. Thank you, Senator. Any Anytime. Thank you so much for having me. So if you want to call in, our number is 914-636-0110 because we're going to have a heated debate coming up about what a is... A heated discussion. A it's heated, not a debate. Well, you and I debate all the time, and sometimes it's heated. I'll, I'll, if you cool off, then it won't be heated. <laughs> <laughs> This is Westchester Island Radio. We'll be right back. Hold on to your seatbelt and uh, come back to us after the break. 1460 WVOX. Let's return now to Westchester Eye on the Radio with Peter Moses. Dardina Seward on 1460 WVOX. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, this is Charlie, and you're listening to Westchester Eye on the Radio. Um, in continuing this hour, we're going to be speaking with Andrew Lawfer. He's an attorney uh, representing Ken Evseroff, who is a uh, as background as a cameraman, and uh, I guess he drove a truck for WPIX, and he has a... Well, the camera people drive the live trucks. Yeah, he was a field op. He was a field, 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 field yeah. uh, Depth of experience in broadcast journalism. And, uh, Mr. and if, by the way, a very good one. And Mr. Laffer, are you out there? Uh, yeah, I am. I'm right here. Oh, well, welcome to the program. And if you would, could you maybe put a frame around um, the reason for this lawsuit and what the lawsuit is all about and, and what you're here to talk about today. Absolutely. Thank you uh, for having me on. Um, essentially, um, Kenneth um, made, um, actually shared a meme um, that was uh, an article was written about uh, in relation to um, Representative Elian um, uh, Omar <laughs> and her, you know, statements that you know uh, she made regarding uh, the 9/11 attacks and 9/11 attackers, and he shared that on Facebook using his own private uh, computer, uh, you know, uh, his own private Facebook account, nothing affiliated whatsoever uh, with his job at WPIX. He shared this. Uh, a co-employee saw it, uh, I guess on Facebook, and then sent it immediately to um, uh, their HR department. Uh, there and after, uh, there was an investigation, and um, they justified the firing of him related to some unfounded allegations that were thoroughly investigated years prior um, and were found to be completely unsubstantiated and the sharing of this um, this meme, so to speak. And... That is illegal under New York State law, believe it or not. Under federal law, an employer can, do, can fire someone for something like this, um, what they do in their own private time, uh, making, making statements like, such as this. But under New York State law, believe it or not, um, it's actually a protected activity, and you cannot be retaliated against that under the labor law. But, Andrew, he didn't make a comment. He shared something. So I don't see how that would be covered by the federal law. He didn't, write, he didn't comment on it whatsoever. He simply put something up that he found somewhere else. Correct. He didn't make this meme. That's exactly right. He didn't make so this how meme. Was that this meme covered? was shared thousands of times by other people. You know, so you know, how, across, that, how was that world, covered? And even, you know, the nation and the world. Right. So how uh, was that covered? There were written about it uh, on CNN, on any uh, of the many news sites. And, um, you know, he just, merely sh- he just merely shared it. Didn't even make a comment about it. Um, there was absolutely no basis to fire my client. And it clearly was um, uh, a basis, you know, uh, what we feel is a violation of New York City human rights law as a predicate for di- discrimination and retaliation. And, and, and in addition, you have, uh, you know, for people who don't, I, I don't know how many of you read the story in the Post, uh, which was also shared in some other media, but, but basically um, Channel 11 at the time when he was working there was owned by a Tribune company, which has been shedding assets for quite some time now, and they actually sold to Scripps Howard. So Ken left; it was let go by the by Tribune Scripps. company, by, 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 by Tribune. and then and then it was upheld by Scripps, and they brought in a new HR person who pursued this. After the HR person from the Tribune company basically said these allegations were com- were unfounded. Um, right. Now, now, Ardina, you and I have known Ken since probably almost thirty years. Yeah, we all worked. We all worked in the field together. Sure. Now he's 
He's a, he's a pretty much of a tough guy. I mean, he's not he's not he's not a shrinking violet. But I would never say that that he never struck me, and to this day doesn't strike me as as somebody with a racist bone in his body. It just sounds like you and I were talking before we came on the show that the hierarchy in television stations is if the reporter cries wolf, then there's a wolf, whether or not the comment or the allegation made by the on-air person is true or not, the they are allowed to be prima donnas. The camera person can be sacrificed. Yeah, and, and it's, uh-huh. it's grossly unfair. Well, yeah, I mean, aside from just being grossly unfair, because I even think if you, you know, under federal law, it's grossly unfair. I think people should be able to, you know, say what they want, you know, um, like that woman who, who gave that uh, colorful gesture to President Trump, you know, or if someone hypothetically wanted to say uh, President Trump bends the knee to uh, Russian oligarchs like Semyon Mogovich, you know, they can do that um, under New York state law and be protected uh, by the labor law under uh, New, uh, New York state labor law 201D. You're allowed to say things like this, whether people, other people agree with it or not, um, on your own time, using your own equipment, as long as you're not using any kind of apparatuses or any kind of outlets that are owned by your employer or operated by your employer or affiliated with your employer. You, you can do this and, and, and not be retaliated against. I mean, people criticize our state so much about, oh, we're such a liberal state and this and that. This is a great protection that we have. Uh, that goes even further than federal courts do in protecting the First Amendment, but, but, our First Amendment in New York State. But, but beyond that, Andrew, I want to ask, was there a perception of Ken as being a racist at the station? No. Uh, it, it, was, it was ridiculous. We have credible evidence, which obviously I don't want to reveal right now, which shows that whatever ridiculous allegations were made against my client were were. were, were in, Thoroughly investigated, were, were people were questions of all race, creeds, and colors that worked there. Uh, everyone that's worked with Ken, and it was found to be completely unsubstantiated. Now, this second act, well, we've got to separate these two things because that was about a year prior. The second act here was the sharing of this meme, which was shared worldwide on on, on Facebook and in the internet. Um, you know, they called him in on this and said, this is clearly racist, and, you know, in my opinion, and I think most people's opinion, it isn't. It's a statement. Um, it's an opinion. Um, and that, you know, based upon your prior, uh, their prior complaints or prior things that occurred, we're firing, firing you. And they, they predicated it firing him for something that he was already investigated for, and there was, no, there was no foundation for it whatsoever. If there was any kind of teeth or any kind of, um, um, substance to any of these allegations made against my client, there would have been a, a filing, a grievance filed at the union, and there never was. But, it, it was completely and totally unfounded. But did and, those prior allegations, were they of the same nature as his posting of the meme? Was there, no, was there a pattern? That's, that's what I'm trying to ask. A pattern of practice? No. In my no. opinion, no. Um, the, the prior allegation was some sort of comments made... Allegedly, uh, that some woman, um, uh, Nareem Chowdhury, uh, alleged, uh, according to the investigation from paper, paperwork we've seen, that uh, Ken made some some comments about um, that were that were racist or that were sexist or something along those lines, and they were just completely. That just didn't happen. It's as simple as that. Um, they didn't happen. Um, there was no evidence of them happening. No one corroborated any of these statements. Um, it was, you know, I mean, in, in, these, in the field, it wasn't, you know, it usually wasn't just Ken and, and this and, and Miss Chowdhury. It was, you know, there were other people around, too. It, it just really, there was just no basis in reality for anything uh, that was made against my client. And there are also, and, there are also other people at PIX who were, uh, it's, a, it's a very diverse work environment there. Um, and none of the none of the other people who represent the rainbow of people who work there um, said they ever had any problems of that sort with Ken ever, from what I understand. Yeah, I mean, I, we, we we have people lining up to support Ken here that have worked with him, that still work in the industry, um, that have signed affidavits supporting him. You know, I, it's just there's just it's ridiculous. They made it this nonsense into such a, a massive deal and it cost 
my client his career. I mean, he has been working for PICS since 1997. So, uh, you know, I mean, obviously, if there was a pattern in practice of inappropriate behavior or racism or anything of the like by my client, he would have been out a long time ago. I think so. Charles, you want yeah, to go? Well, so I, I want to understand the premise of this lawsuit. I'm not an sure. attorney, but I had an opportunity to read the filing. Mm-hmm. And um, it looks like there's three causes involved. One is that there, that your client's rights under New York State labor law were violated. That New York mm-hmm. State labor law provides protection for employees' social relationships, and mm-hmm. that and that sending out that meme was protected by New York State labor law. The second cause um, is your client is basically saying that there was a racially hostile work environment. And that there was another employee, um, Mr. Ramos, I believe his name is, who said Correct. something on on Twitter about President Trump, Correct. Uh, and no action was taken against him. So, based on that, your client believes that uh, his that that he is um, that Being a racially or, that a racially hostile environment has right. been created against him. And the third cause has to do with slander and defamation of character. Correct. So, does he want his job back? Uh, yeah, he wants to work. My client is, loves what he does. What he does loves his his work. He, he doesn't want to. You know, this is not like a money grab. This is about what's right. Okay. This is about getting his job back, well, getting so, his back pay, and giving him something. You know that will acknowledge the wrong the wrongs that were done to him. Right. So um, here's what I don't understand. So then, if mm-hmm. if that's so, then mm-hmm. why are the prior <laughs> things that happened? With Miss Shoudery and the other two women who came forward subsequent to Miss Shoudery, mm-hmm. who also work at PX, why do those things matter? We need to talk about that when we come back after this break. Yeah, we're, we're going to have a break. Um, I know, I believe that Ken is listening. Uh, I don't. I, I'm assuming, Mr. Laufer, that you don't want him on the air with us today, right? I mean, generally, I, I don't like to have my clients make state public statements because those are, you know. More than just a generalized statement, because those are they're more actionable. Of, uh, they're you actionable. Know, these are things that can be used, you know, and twisted against him. So I would prefer him not to make any public statements. All right, well, Ken, you can also text me so I can get your thoughts about what's going on here. Uh, we're on this. We're we're on WVOX today, as we are every week, every Monday at three o'clock, three to four. It's Martin Luther King Day. We have a commercial break coming up, and after that, we're going to continue this conversation. About Ken Evzeroff. We'll be right back. 1460 WVOX. Let's return now to Westchester Eye on the Radio with Peter Moses and Ardina Seward on 1460 WVOX. Here we are again. We get to do it for the next 10 minutes. I'm Ardina Seward along with Peter Moses, our, our guest co host today, Charles Stern. And we are on the line with Andrew Laufer, and we're discussing the case of Ken Evsaroff, who was fired from WPIX-TV. I, I want to ask you, Andrew, about the uh, uh, abundance of evidence, and maybe I'm mischaracterizing the, the, uh, the, the folder that they have on Ken. If he was exonerated of those charges, why is he being targeted at this point? Well, that's, a, that's an excellent question. Um, I don't know. I think they overreacted. Uh, I, don't, I think they should have just ignored what happened here. Uh, him sharing a meme on Facebook uh, on his own private account, it, it had nothing to do with his duties and responsibilities at WPIX. It, it didn't bring a a bad light on to WPIX at all. It's, it has nothing to do with WPIX. So I have absolutely no idea why they were predicating a, a, a prior um, investigation and this meme sharing uh, as a basis for his firing. When the prior HR individual completely exonerated my client. So it just, it really smacks of, of just I don't. I don't like accusing other people of things. I. I you know. It, it, to me, it, it just smacks of, of clear bias, of clear, um, you know, 
just 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 oh, hyper vigilance gone you know just gone awry. So, uh, so let me double click on that if I if I may. Um, sure, Mr. Lawfer, you talk about in the lawsuit the the concept is that your client's rights were violated because labor law allows you know allows you to, to do these kinds of things on your own time basically sure. so why are you bringing into the case things that happened prior you know the allegations by miss chowdery who i gather was an on-camera person at wpix still is and uh she she just to, to round this off here a queen's born chowdery 38 years old a muslim bangladeshi american and mother of two worked at wpix since 2011 i'm reading from the uh, new york post article claimed that Evzorov made quote rude racist and or sexist comments unquote during nearly every assignment they worked together according to hr documents so that's that's what's hanging in the air but why bring it into the case at all if you don't need it because because your client is suing because his rights were violated related to the publication of this meme. What? Why does? Why is there? Explain the linkage if there is one. Sure, that's a good question. The reason being is it was brought up during uh, his interview regarding this meme that he had, you know, prior instances of of racial uh, or or bigoted comments. Um, that was literally brought up uh, while he was being, uh, you know, while this meme was being discussed uh, by HR and the uh, other co-defendant, uh, Christian um, uh, uh, Tausig. Well, the HR lady, and the, I'm, I'm reading now from the case, a very short quotation. The, the HR individual you were just referred to is Courtney Williams. She's HR for the, the, the TV station. Um, the following words of the defendant, Courtney Williams. It's troubling and concerning how you can't see how someone can perceive this post is racist, and WPIX and Tribune Media does not condone this racist content, unquote. She's dealing with the Ilhan Omar post. She's not dealing with the stuff that happened in the prior reports by the reporters. Correct. And and also who was in, I guess given the, the, the documents where you have, also who was in that uh, interview, um, uh, you know, or investigation was, was an individual by uh, Christian Towson. You can see he's a co-defendant there as well. Right. And uh, he, you know, brought that up as, you know, he brought up the prior incidents. Uh, Ms. Williams was primarily focused on the, um, uh, the, the meme. Uh, and, and, you know, there was a point, I think, that I wanted to touch on that was important with regard to Mr. Ramos and what, how the, uh, the, the, the WPX handled his, um, uh, you know, um, his his tweeting comments about you know uh, wanting to punch, I believe, uh, if I'm quoting this correctly, uh, Donald Trump. Um, mm -hmm. He wasn't suspended. He wasn't he wasn't fired. He wasn't su suspended as far as we know, and he didn't lose any pay. They basically just kind of brushed that. It seems like under the they, table. They kept they kept him out off the station for two days. They kept him out of yeah. the, out of work for two days, but he was paid during that time. Yeah, and and our, my client has been out for months and hasn't been paid, and I think that. That's a clear violation, a uh, disparity in treatment other than New York City human rights law. Um, you, you can't treat people differently. As far as I'm concerned, everyone it should be treated the same way when it comes to conduct um, in, in, the, uh, in, in the social atmosphere here. You, you, can't, you can't decide that one thing, is, one thing is just a little unacceptable and one is just completely outrageous and requires termination of an employ of someone being employed. But does this uh, speak to the hierarchy between uh, between uh, reporters and crew members? Because a lot of times I think that the station will see the reporter as the franchise mm -hmm. and the, 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 the crew person as the stepchild. So You know, that, that could very well be. Uh, you know, you have on-air talent versus, um, you know, people in the background, the technical crews. So yeah, I, you know, I, I can certainly see that. Um, I would think you would want to ha hold your honor if we were going to have disparity in treatment. Let's let's go to a magical world and pretend that's okay. You know, you would want your honor talent to be held to a higher standard. I would imagine because they're the face of your organization. No one's going to see the cameraman. No one's going to see the who's working the boom or the lighting. You know, you're going to be seeing you know the person the, the face on TV or listening to them on the radio. Um, so you would want them. To have a certain you know code of conduct that may be more strict, uh, but regardless you know of that, 
under the law, regardless of whatever um, you know, new show or, or organization um, determines what a pr- specific code of conduct is, it must comply at a minimum with the law. And the law in New York City uh, under New York human rights law is that you cannot be treated differently um, for any reason uh, based upon race, religion, color, creed, or any, anything of that nature. And in our opinion, there's a clear disparity in treatment here. Um, so, you know, that's why we have the uh, human rights law claim. Is this a cautionary tale regarding the First Amendment for employees as to what they can post on Facebook? Well, yeah. I mean, I think this, you know, if this is allowed to stand, I mean, at least in New York State, this sends a chill um, in terms of freedom of speech. Now, you know, I'm not advocating, you know, uh, you know, allowing people to just say whatever, you know, false news or anything like that. You know, this, we should go out and do all this stuff. What I am saying is that if there's, if there's something that you want to say, um, you should be able to say it as long as you're doing it on your own time, using your own equipment, and, and, and it's completely unaffiliated with your employment. You should, you're, you're protected under New York State law, and, and that's it. And, and, and what happened to Ken here was a clear, a clear violation of that. I think, Charles, you had a question also. Well, I don't know. I guess we would, we would need to hear from... Um, <clears throat> the attorneys for, for, for the uh, defendants mm-hmm. uh, to kind of understand where they're coming from, but um, creating this equivalency between Mr. Ramos and Mr. Evzeroff is is complicated because they're not the same person, they're not precisely the same circumstances, and they didn't say exactly the same thing. Um, uh, there There is some linkage, I guess, to the prior actions because the meme how was related. It was uh, you know, argue, well, it was about a person who is Muslim. Uh, the complaints that were prior were by someone who is Muslim. So perhaps that's where there was some linkage uh, that differentiates this case from the Ramos instance. Yeah, but the but the the statement wasn't about um, um, being Muslim or or you know or anything of that nature. It was. It was about statements that <laughs> Ms. Uh, Omar, a representative Omar, had made publicly regarding the 9-11 attacks. And the meme, I guess, was some sort of way of a caricature of, 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 of kind of criticizing her about that. Well, we're going to need to wrap it up now. Um, thanks very much for appearing on our air, Mr. Laffer. And, um, uh, and please say hello to Ken from... Ardina and myself, Charles doesn't know uh, Ken, but we do, and uh, he was a fine camera person when I knew him, and uh, seemed to have a good head on his shoulders, and I find these allegations troubling. Um, I don't believe that they're true. So we're going to be back next week with another show. With a show um, (coughs) about LGBTQ, and we're going to have... Angel Electra and his husband Shady Pines, and they're gonna they're gonna tell us all about the inner workings of LGBTQ politics in Yonkers, New York. Have a great week, folks. Come back next week. <laughs> <laughs>